Hello and welcome to Sanyukta Singh Studio guys and this is Avinash again your GK mentor and this is the seventh episode continuously for all of you guys who are preparing for design entrance exam be it NIFT, NID, UC or SEED. So after so many of requests from so many designer aspirants across India on our YouTube channel and Instagram um, the questions related with science and what sort of questions usually come uh, related with science and GK and current affairs. So here I am with the seventh episode. I hope you are liking this channel because we are continuously uploading a single video every single day. All right, so let's not waste the time and uh, going forward, we'll start uh, science based GK. Before you do that, if you're watching this channel for the first time, do like, share, and subscribe this channel so it reaches to the right audience. GK going forward so important areas where what you can study uh, if there are chances that a question may come from science area so chemical formulas uses of different chemical compositions in your daily life third is zoology like uh, you know animals and uh, human body human body is there planets related different field studies all right so these are some of the areas from where you can study right going forward the first question is what is the chemical symbol of gold now chemical symbol you know if you have uh, studied periodic table you must be knowing that uh, what exactly uh, chemical symbol stands for so the for gold the correct answer is au the same way for silver it is ag and uh, for uh, lead it is uh, PB and then for silicon it is uh, SI for, for chlorine it is CL carbon that is C and then uh, platinum it is PT and then uh, for tin it is SN so these are the chemical symbols so my uh, my motto is to let you know that sort of question may come so you should go through the periodic table two or three times so you'll memorize the chemical symbol of every element all right going forward the next question is what is the closest planet to the sun now closest planet if you know the planet system if you have studied the planet system you may be able to answer that that uh, which uh, planet planet is at first which is at the second which is at the third so this is called planet system so here the clo closest planet to the sun is mercury answer is b now how to remember that how to remember the planet system and the easiest method to remember the planet system so let's i'll show it to you in the next slide that is this is a planet system what you see here you see the, uh, the closest one from the sun is mercury and then venus earth mars jupiter saturn uranus neptune now here how to remember that the easiest method is my very excited mother just showed us nachos so you need to remember this phrase my very excited mother just showed us nachos now my that means mercury venus earth mars jupiter saturn uranus and neptune so there are eight planets in the planet system right now some of them some of you uh, may be thinking that what about pluto which is at the ninth position that is not planet that is called dwarf planet 
So there is a definition of dwarf palette. I won't go into a deeper section of that. But here you can remember this way. My very excited mother just showed us nachos to remember the planet system. Clear? Next question. What is the unit of frequency? Now that is again, I'm giving you a path that what sort of questions may arise in uh, GK portion if it is related with science. So what is, a free, uh, what is a unit of frequency? You have the options, watt, volt, hertz, ohm. The correct answer is hertz. So you need to memorize the different units of different parameters. So here, um, in the next slide, if you can see here, for time it is second, for mass it is gram, for distance it is meter, for volume it is L or M3, force, Newton, energy, joule, power, watt, current, ampere, potential difference that is volt, resistance, ohm, pressure, pascal, frequency, hertz, number, mole. So I'm just giving you an example here this way. You can go through the chart of the different units and uh, the measurement system and then you can remember that. We can memorize that because there are chances that the question may arise from this particular field. Clear? Next question is, who developed the laws of heredity? Now you have an options here, Gregor Mendel, Charles Darwin, Louis Pasteur or Francis Crick. The correct answer is Gregor Mendel. He actually developed the laws of heredity, which is more related with genes. Okay, so again, you need to memorize the inventor or who actually developed different laws, science laws. Okay, so here in the next slide, it's Albert Einstein, which is general and special theories of relativity right Darwin laws of natural selection so this way you need to remember different field or science laws inventors there are chances that the question may arise from this particular field okay going forward which gas is most abundant in earth's atmosphere now what do you understand if you understand the meaning of abundant you will definitely answer this Abundant is more than sufficient. So which gas is actually uh, in the earth atmosphere in uh, maximum quantity or more than sufficient quantity? So the correct answer is nitrogen. Nitrogen is available in earth's atmosphere and it is known as abundant gas. Clear? So you need to go through the path where you can find out the gas, uh, different sort of gases and uh, how they are related with Earth's atmosphere. That is again a different part. Going forward, what causes tides? Now, high tide, low tide. If you have read about it in your class 9th and 10th, you must be remembering that what exactly is the real cause of high tides or low tides which actually causes that impact right so the options are gravitational pull of the moon gravitational pull of the sun earth's rotation or earth's magnetic field so the correct answer is gravitational pull of the moon gravitational pull of the moon is the actual reason through which the high tide or low tide takes place in the sea all right so if you will see in the full moon day, the tides are always high, always high. And that is why it is advised to the fisherman or anyone else to not go into the deep sea usually because of the high tide, clear? Next question, which planet is known as the red planet? Now also try to remember the nickname of different planets, right? So red planet obviously 90% of you must be knowing the answer. The correct answer is Mars. Mars is known as the red planet. But what about other planets? Like which planet is known as blue planet? I'll show it to you in the next slide. So which planet is known as a blue planet? Uh, over here, blue planet. The correct answer is Neptune. Neptune is known as the blue planet here. Now, the brightest planet, the brightest planet in the solar system, brightest planet. So brightest planet in the solar system is Venus. 
Venus is the brightest planet. Again, largest planet in the solar system, Jupiter. Jupiter is largest planet in the solar system. Again, the coldest planet in the solar system, the coldest planet, the coldest planet in the solar system is Uranus. Uranus is known as the coldest planet in the solar system. And going forward, the next question is, what is the study of fossils called? So different field and the studies and they're known as. So what is the study of fossils called? The correct answer is paleontology. You have the option geology, paleontology, archaeology, anthropology. So you need to go through the list of different fields and what are they called in their relative fields, all right? So the next slide is a study of viruses, virology, study of kidneys, nephrology, study of cancers, oncology, study of birds, ornithology, study of fruits, pomology, study of bones, osteology, study of egg, oology, study of eyes, ophthalmology, study of hair, trichology, study of brain, encephalology. So here different ways, study of maps, study of soil, study of mountains, study of insects, study of ants. So there are different fields. So you can find it out very easily on Google and type in their different field and their relative studies called. And there you'll find the list, go through that and remember that because this is something which usually comes in the exam, right? Going forward, which chemical is used for dramatic effect in theaters? So when I was in the very first slide, I showed you the important areas, the chemical compositions used in our daily life. So which chemical is used for dramatic effect in theater? So your options are chloroform, sodium nitrate, silicon carbide or dry ice. The correct answer is dry ice. It is also known as solid carbon dioxide. It is solid CO2. Solid carbon dioxide is also called dry ice. Now how does it actually used, uh, how exactly is it used as a dramatic effect in theaters to show uh, the fog which you see on the platform, right, the smoke that is being created using this particular dry ice. Clear? Next slide. What is the hardest natural substance on earth? So you need to go through the different substances and their nature if it is solid, liquid, gas forms. All right. So here the options are gold, diamond, platinum and silver. The correct answer is the hardest natural substance on earth is diamond. Diamond is the hardest natural substance. Clear? The next question is what is the pH value of normal, normal human blood? So normal human blood, you have the options here, lies between 6.35 to 6.45. Second option is 7.35 to 7.45. Third is 5.8 to 6.8. And the last one is 7.2 to 7.9. The correct answer is 7.35 to 7.45. That is the pH value normal pH value of normal human blood. Clear? The next question is, which of the following compound is known as caustic soda? So caustic soda and uh, what, is the, it's the, what is the chemical composition of it? So you have an option NaOH, NaHCO3, NaCl, Na2CO3. So the correct answer is NaOH. But instead of caustic soda, if it is baking soda, then what will be that? If it is baking soda, what is the chemical compound of it? It is NaHCO3. That is baking soda chemical compound or chemical formula. NaCl, it is table, uh, table salt, the normal salt which you use, the white salt which you use, that is NaCl. So here I'm giving you a path, a direction that you should try remembering different chemical formulas, it, uh, its scientific name, its normal name, like in a daily life name, and then its uses, right? Caustic soda usually gets used in uh, detergent and then uh, soaps, right? And then baking soda which you use in cooking, right and uh, NaCl that is table salt so you see here baking soda is a normal name 
the uh, the daily life name which you use it is the chemical formula right again baking soda nhco3 all right but in that case what are the uses of it so baking soda is usually used in cooking all right so this is how it works so this was it i hope that you like this video i gave you a direction from where you can find out more number of questions related with these topics uh, which may come in the NIFT entrance exam so uh, please do share subscribe and like this channel and wait for my next video I'll try to upload the next video in the next 24 to 48 hours again and uh, keep sharing it keep liking it giving us you know love there is a thanks button if you actually want to support us you can click on the thanks and then donate it right so see you in the next video till then take care bye bye